Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button if you guys are enjoying the content that we're throwing up. And uh, make sure you guys hit the like button if you enjoy the video. And yeah, let's begin. Okay, so uh, getting into Batman Superman number one, right? The story of the Shazam Who Laughs. This is a really, really cool story because this fits in nicely with uh, Scott Snyder's Dark Knight's Metal. Now, with Williamson, I don't really worry about making sure things fit into continuity, but there are writers where you do kind of worry about that, right? For those of you guys who are finishing uh, Superman Unity Saga, the which we'll actually do the second video, or I guess the first part of the conclusion, we'll do that today as well. Yeah, Brian Michael Bendis just kind of yanks out an ending out of nowhere, and it's, or part of an ending out of nowhere, and it's like, it's the day is saved, and it's kind of like, okay. You know, but with Williamson, I never really worry about that. With a lot of writers, when they do tie-ins or they do like a follow-up to an event, uh, they'll in turn like start crafting a story and change things. Almost like they're they're genuinely aware of the original story, but never actually read it. And that's one of the things that I was, you know, that 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 there is pause to be concerned for. But again, with Williamson, we don't really worry about those kinds of things, right? I mean, the guy's an outstanding writer. The guy keeps everything in continuity. I definitely dig his work. And so what this does is it initially takes place in the dark multiverse itself, and it picks up basically with Superman. Now, of course, Superman is summoned to the Justice League Watchtower basically by Batman. And again, this works really, really well because when it comes to Batman and Superman, they're kind of the one-two punch of the comic book community, right? I mean, and when I say comic book community, I mean like in general, including Marvel, DC, like Valiant, the whole nine yards, like they are the one-two punch in so far as like they're the two guys, right? Like they're the two guys that you always call. When Batman and Superman team up, then you usually get spectacular stories out of it because it's brain and brawn. And so when this takes place, when Superman like actually gets out there, he gets into the Watchtower only to find that basically every everybody's been killed. This is a cool thing is because if you remember during the uh, Batman Who Laughs one shot comic, the tie in to Dark Knight's Metal that gave us his origin story, this is what he did, right? We don't really know exactly how he did it. We just know he did that he went through and essentially like, like killed all the members of the Justice League, right? So like, like Hawkman, Hawkgirl, and then you have like Martian Manhunter and you've got Wonder Woman and, and the Flash and everybody like they're all literally just dead. And when Superman had walked into the watchtower because of the fact that the whole place had been flooded with a kryptonite gas, he was immediately dying, right? Like it was immediately the end of him. Like, like this whole place is flooded with kryptonite gas. There's no way for you to get out of here. You're going to die. And so it's kind of a precursor to everything, right? Because we know that following this little, this little bit of an introduction, that in turn, what he'd done is he had kidnapped Jonathan Kent and Lois Lane and then brought them to the watchtower and then infected both Jonathan Kent and Superman with black kryptonite, which of course drove them insane and they tore Lois Lane apart. And so it's kind of interesting because this was really done to incapacitate Superman. It didn't really lead to his immediate death, but like it was designed to incapacitate Superman and then turn him into his darker self by using black kryptonite. Tonight. And the whole reason why the Batman who last did this was because he was kind of like, I was just curious. I was just curious what you would be like if you were like your darker self. Again, it's really twisted and it's really more screwed up. But what this does is it jumps to Earth Zero. Now, this is where the main story basically begins to pick up. And what you have here is, is Commissioner Gordon summoning Batman himself. Now, when he summons him, Batman also just sort of kind of talks, right? And Commissioner Gordon thinks he's talking to him. But Batman is basically running over everything that had happened since the events of Dark Knight's Metal. That after that story where it seemed like all the Dark Knights had basically been defeated, the Batman Who Laughs survived and then kind of started going through with this campaign to try to make Batman into his darker self, to kind of present this idea that Batman could only ever be happy if he basically gave in to his darker side, right? So very similar to the killing joke, right? The Joker's desire to show that all it takes is one bad day for a person to snap and become just like him. Now, of course, it didn't work for Batman. He ended up staying and, and becoming a good guy, you know, I guess staying a good guy and, and staying his normal self, as we saw during the, uh, the, the what is it, Batman Who Laughs parts one through seven full story. But basically, he's running over all this and explaining it all to Superman. And that's kind of a funny thing here is because you would expect that Superman would know all of this, right? I mean, we know that at the end of the Batman Who Laughs that he's basically stuck in the, the basement of the Hall of Justice and he's being held prisoner there. But just because he's there doesn't mean that, Super that Batman explained everything to Superman. And it could be that Batman just took him there and threw him in, right? Because any member of the Justice League can access the Hall of Justice, right? I mean, they're part and parcel to the team. They can come and go as they please. And so it's a cool little bit of a thing here because basically all this stuff is sort of explained to Superman. Superman insofar as like the danger of an alternate reality version where there's a Batman who has all of his intelligence and all the Joker's insanity and can use that to achieve whatever goal he wants. Now, the meat and potatoes for why it is that that Commissioner Gordon summoned Batman here and, and really Superman by extension is because there's a little kid named Danny Miles that's gone missing, right? He's been missing for a little while, his parents are freaking out and it's, hey Batman, like we need it, we need it, you know, to be sorted out. And Batman summons Superman here to basically talk to him and to help him with this case. Now, one of the cool things about this is that this is actually the first time in the history of, of really since the New 52 that Superman has met Jim Gordon. It's a pretty awesome little moment to go on here. No, I'm just messing around. <laughs> 
somebody somewhere out there somebody is furiously typing away on their keyboard like freaking out like no that's not true i found something rob is wrong about yay like it's 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 interesting <laughs> i imagine there's somebody losing it right now but the whole reason why superman was summoned here by batman is because this is kind of williamson touching on tower of babel and it's cool right he doesn't explicitly say it and even in the aftermath of tower of babel while it wasn't referenced all the time like the stage had basically been set this idea that batman had protocols to take out each member of the justice league if they lost their mind and they went rogue and that's kind of what williamson hits on right like batman literally asked superman do you have protocols on what would happen if i became evil like if i lost my mind and decided to take everybody out are there any protocols there like do you have any way to make sure that i wouldn't use anything against you and, and it's kind of a funny thing because at the outset you would think well yeah i mean superman's protocol is to just punch batman's head off right i mean just like it's like mr sunday movie said like all the ways superman could kill batman right like like do this thing and then kick his head off like or punch his head off or like rip his head off or something like that like all the different ways to pull that off which is actually a pretty amazing video you guys should all go watch that but the fact remains is batman sort of asking the question what are you guys going to do if a time comes when with all my knowledge and all my understanding of your weaknesses and your strengths i basically go crazy and i decided to take all of you all of you guys out and the, the response to superman really seems to be we don't have one because we trust you and that's cool and everything but you always need to make sure that you have a plan, like a plan right like members of the justice league have to have that because you're talking about people who are exceedingly powerful or capable in their own right batman's not really powerful he doesn't really possess any powers but between his intellect and and all his knowledge on the members of the justice league he could bring them down quick fast and in a hurry that was the nature of tower of babel right like all these different protocols that were set up to incapacitate each member of the league in case they went awry or or whatever the case was for superman to kind of respond like that almost really seems naive like what if the most intelligent member of your superhero team and indeed probably one of the most intelligent members of the of like the planet earth short of maybe lex luther basically were to turn into a villain with all his knowledge about you you have no safeguard for that like you have no way to protect yourself from that that's how the batman who laughs won presumably is because his whole league trusted him and there's something to be said about trusting him but there's also something to be saying about being foolish about not really taking the steps you need to in order to make sure that you and yours are safe right because more important than any individual in the justice league is safeguarding the earth itself and ensuring the league's survival that supersedes everything right so you kind of have to make sure all that is set in stone now when this happens of course they end up traveling down to this great big huge hole where uh where it seems as though danny miles has basically gone to or at least where it seems like a place where he would have been taken and when they get there of course there's all these mech bots essentially that were brought in here by the batman who laughs and they're all taken out pretty easily what this does is this leads into essentially like this big makeshift place where the batman who laughs was operating out of and it's not really even makeshift i mean it's built and designed pretty well but when the batman who laughs and the grim knight were functioning that's what this is and this is a cool thing because we never really saw the tried and true layer of of the batman who laughs right we never really saw the tried and true layer of where he worked out of we know he did and we saw little glimpses here and there but it's cool to essentially see the whole thing right it's, it's cool to see like this entire thing in terms of where he was functioning and, and what he was doing but like all these different you know like like battering molds and all these different things all these devices were designed for the purpose of having essentially remnants of the Ma uh, batman who laughs serum as well as things like green kryptonite to take out superman and so it's obvious the plan of the batman who laughs was much grander than simply just incapacitating batman it would have put two queens on the chessboard no pun intended because what you would have had is a batman who laughs who has all the all the intelligence of batman and all the insanity of the joker who in turn brings the main dc universe batman over to his side you've got two evil batman running around a universe they would decimate all everybody would fall fall prey to them and so what this does is it almost leads to a kind of game right there's this chessboard that's basically set up between the white and the black side and the way the pieces are arranged no side can move without the other winning right so like if the black side moves a piece white wins if white moves a piece black wins right just because of the way that the chess set is set up and so as a result of this it's kind of like well what if we move a piece like let's just see what happens and when they do it ends up basically bringing this giant image of all the different members of the superhero community when i say all i mean all of them every single member of the superhero community and the idea is they're all they've all basically been jokerized meaning they're all a target for the batman who laughs serum right for the for, you know to basically turn them all into villains and so it's kind of cool because when that happens suddenly the two of them are met by the by by one of the crows of the batman who laughs now these crows were always ambiguous and really it wasn't even like scott snyder never really even gave us any indication of what they were you know when this story was initially announced it was funny because i saw people who were complaining about the fact that like why is he why is you know joshua williamson changing these crows to be what they are to, to make them into his own thing but that's funny like snyder never told us what they were the fan base assumed what they were and then took that assumption as fact and so it's, it's interesting right because i mean we do that all the time but it's it's sort of it's sort of intriguing there and so the result is that we basically have this this crow who you know of course attacks batman and then basically starts talking to the two of them and saying that like the the batman who last took this
this this kid from his family and and basically hit him with a batarang that turned him into the person that he is now turned him into a crow did he change this kid into what he is forced him to start wearing this this costume and basically like you know used him in the various missions that he had and so where you have superman who addresses this kid as as danny miles the kid says you don't understand i'm not danny miles like he took me like the batman who laughs took me from where i was and freed me like i'm not upset about where i am i'm not sad about being where i am i don't want to go back home like i'm free like like do you guys not recognize me my name's billy batson and so this is crazy because what we get is the shazam who laughs and this is awesome because billy in turn shouts the word shazam and then basically like becomes this insane powerhouse and asks the question i always want what it would be like to beat the crap out of Superman and actually what he's got in his hand is to stab him with one of the one of the Batman who laughs uh batarangs this is amazing because like the the notion of a, of a Shazam who laughs right I mean you know Superman who laughs would be cool but Shazam is a fan favorite you guys love him and so like you take like Shazam and then you turn him into basically like a Batman who laughs character oh it's beast it's amazing <laughs> but with that being said guys we're gonna bring this video to an end if you are new here to comments explain make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. if you guys enjoy this video make sure you drop a like and I will catch you all later. Peace.